Welcome back YouTube. My name is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, we are going to have a look at methods and we are going to create our own methods because we have seen the start method and we have seen the update method. And now it's time to create our own method. So I'm going to get rid of the update method as we are not using it in this video. So I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm not going to use it. If I should use it again, I can simply enter up, for example, and then it's proposed here. So I could choose to, to rebuild the update method. As you can see, it's created here. The only difference now is that it says it's private, but it's not really relevant because the update method usually is not called from outside anyways. All right, so now let's create our own method. And I'm going to call my method summation because it's going to create or build the sum of two variables. So let's call it int summation. And now within those brackets, I can enter however many parameters that I want. So a parameter could be, for example, int num1 and int num2. So for example, in this case, we should maybe call summation with a capital S. There's just a naming rule here, as you see, naming rule violation. So you should always call methods with a capital letter or they should have a capital letter at the beginning. And then we still get an error here because it says not all code paths return a value. That means that this method here needs to return a value. That means it needs the return statement and afterwards there needs to be some variable or value that needs to be returned. And for example, I could return the sum of num1 plus num2. So let's build that. Let's create an integer called sum is equal num1 plus num2. So I'm just going to add the two variables that are given to me. So here I create parameter num1 and parameter num2, which are of type integer. And whenever this method is called, I will add those two together and will save them within the integer variable called sum. And then I'm going to return sum. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. So why do I need this return statement? And why don't I have it here? Because start is also a method. Why doesn't it have a return statement? That's because it's of type void. Void means it doesn't need a return statement. Int, however, means that this method here that I'm using will return an integer. So that means that whatever I return here needs to be of type int. That's really important here. All right, so let's call that method once. Let's call it within our start method. So let's say summation. As you can see, I enter sum or SU and it automatically proposes this method called summation. So let's use that one. And now it says it needs an integer num1 and an integer num2. So these are the arguments that I need to give here. For example, I could enter the health as being the first argument and let's say 50 as the second argument. So the second one is also of type integer. Now it's really important that those two are of type integer because if, for example, I enter 50.5, I violate the requirements here, which are that it has to be an integer because what we did here, we said this parameter is of type int. So if you want to call the method, you have to give me an integer. And that's what we do here. So if we add those two, this one will return a number. It will return the sum of those two values. So health plus 50. So let's debug that as well. So debug log, because otherwise we would not see what this value in the end is. So let's hand that over. And as you can see, I can call a method and give it over as an argument for another method because log is a method itself. It's a method within the debug class. So if you press the, as you can see here, debug is a class, a class containing methods to ease debugging while developing a game. And we saw that before. If I press my command key and I press on debug, you will see this is the debug class, which contains loads of different methods. And we are using the log method and we call another method, which we call summation within that debug log. So what we now can do is 
we can have a look what is returned as the sum of our two values. So let's save that. Let's go to our game and let's start it. Now we will just get a value. We get the value of 250. Why do we get 250? That's because our health was set here to 100, but that is ignored as we have entered 200 here on the inspector side. So here the health is set to 200. That's why we get the value of 250 because 200 plus 50 is 250, obviously. All right, there is one more thing that I would like to show you, and that is that we can use methods or the results of methods or the calls of methods in order to save a value in another variable. So let's create a new variable. Let's call it my sum and let's call summation here with 25 and 15. And the next one we can do is instead of calling summation here with health and 50, we just enter my sum as the debug log argument. So the new argument is my sum and let's save that and let's have a look now. So debug log, now it shouldn't show 250, it should show 40 and there you are, it shows 40. So this, these are the different ways how you can, for example, use methods and variables and you can even combine them. So you can call a method and enter the result within a variable. And that is possible because this data type is the same data type then as this method returns. It returns an integer data type. All right, this could be any other data type that you can think of. It could be a float, a double, a string, a char, and so forth that this method returns. So it doesn't have always have to be an integer and it doesn't even have to be one of those simple data types. It could be a whole object. So for example, a method could return an enemy or it could return a bullet or whatever you could think of. Whatever you have as a class can be returned with a method. For now, it's okay if you simply understand how to do that with integers, but we're going to use objects for that later on as well. So just so you know that you can expect quite some advanced features in this course. All right, one little thing that I haven't showed you in this particular case is that you can add an access modifier to this method as well. So you could call it pu or add public as an access modifier. Then you could call the summation method from any other script. So that's really handy. That can be very important in many games where you're using many different scripts. So just so you know. And if you set it to private, then no one can access it except for this class itself or if you said nothing at the start it's the same thing only this class can access it so now let's create a method that doesn't return anything but what it does is it makes hungry for example makes hungry all right so what this method will do and as you can see i don't get an error even though i'm not returning anything this method will simply increase the hunger of our player whenever it is called. So it's going to make him double as hungry as he already is. So let's say we set hunger equal to hunger times two. So we multiply hunger with itself and set this as the new value of hunger. If we call makes hungry in our start method now, we will see how the, the hunger variable of 3.5 will go to 7. So let's pause the script or let's stop the game and let's start it again. And look at hunger here and you can see hunger is set to 7. So this is another way how to use methods. So they don't have to always return something. You can create methods that don't return anything they, that simply do something. That's useful for example Makes hungry, that's, a, that's one option. Here it would make sense to use a parameter, however, for example, by how much you want to make the hungry or the player hungry. So amount of hunger, well, if you could call something like that, then you could say, I don't want to double the hunger, but I want to uh, set the hunger or increase hunger by the amount of additional hunger. So plus amount of hunger. So this is also a way how you could use methods.
This is one example, makes hungry, another one take damage, another one kill enemy or kill player or something like that or take damage based on how much damage the, the player gets and you can enter a value here whenever you call it. So now as you can see I get an error here because makes hungry this call here does not fit with the declaration of the method anymore because here it expects an integer and here we don't have any argument at all. So we could enter 25 for example. So now we will make someone 25 more hungry, whatever that is. <laughs> Super hungry or I don't know, but just just a value here, okay? Just for this example, right? Okay, so I'd say that's the basics of methods for now. We will use plenty of methods and then you will get a better understanding. I'm going to explain what those methods do and that will make it much easier for you to understand anyways. Great, so see you in the next video where we are going to cover arithmetic operators. So see you there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you have any questions or suggestions, then leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And by the way, if you really love the content and you would like to have more of it or pretty much all of it, then of course, check out the link in the description to my whole course. See you in the next video.